So BS7671 tells us that insulation resistance shall be measured between live conductors and between live conductors and a protective conductor connected to the earthing arrangement. And, when appropriate, line and neutral conductors may be connected together. We mentioned this in the previous video, but these are the test voltages you should test at. And these are the minimum insulation resistance values. Periodics, anything around two, should require further investigation. But initial verification, you are expecting off the scale results. Here we're going to do an insulation resistance test between the neutrals and CPCs for circuits 1, 2 and 3. Circuits 1, 2 and 3 are all on the same neutral bar. We can do this two ways. We can disconnect each neutral, 1, 2 and 3, and test each one individually to earth. Or we can keep them connected together and test all three circuits to earth. Now don't forget, we've tested these cables before when we initially installed the cables. And if we test all three together, if we get perfect results, we're okay. If we start getting results that aren't perfect, we would then disconnect the neutrals and test them individually to earth. If you've got your board all made up, you've got all your conductors terminated and talk correctly, you might not want to start dismantling it again. So this is what we do. So we put one probe on the neutral bar for one, two, and three, one probe on the earth bar, press our test button, and expect to get a perfect result and we've confirmed satisfactory insulation resistance between the neutrals and CPC connections for circuits 1, 2 and 3. Now we just need to swap the clip over to the second neutral bar. We'll keep the other clip on the earth bar and do the same test again. And this time we're checking circuits 4, 5 and 6 to earth. So again, press the test button. Expect perfect results. So we're happy that the installation resistance between the neutrals and the earths, the CPCs, are good for circuits 1 through to 6. Now let's test our neutrals to our line conductors. Put our crocodile clip on the first neutral bar and this time we're going to use a probe we need to make contact with the screw termination in the MCB. Obviously these probes have got leads going back to the meter. I've just left them out for clarity. So again we just press the test button to expect a perfect result. We'll just keep the green clip on the neutral bar because it's common to three circuits. We just have to move the red probe from 1 to 2 to 3, testing each time. So we, we move the red probe to the second MCB, press the test button, get the reading. We move the red probe to number 3, press the button, take a reading. You'll notice that circuit 3 is a lighting circuit. So when you're doing your insulation resistance test on lighting circuits, make sure you operate the switches. Because there's cables going down to the switch, we need to include that in the insulation resistance tests. So you'll be testing your strappers on two-way switching. Now we need to move the green clip onto the second neutral bar. So we'll be testing four, five, and six in the same process again. Red probe on the four, take your reading. Red probe on the five, take your reading. And red probe on the six and take your reading. And you've done your insulation resistance test between your lives and neutrals. And you shouldn't have any issues because we haven't got any loads. And you should again expect perfect results. Right, now it's time to test between the live conductors and earth. So we'll put the green clip on the earth bar, and with the red probe, we'll just go along the MCBs one at a time, press the test button, and get our recordings. So go to one, press your test button, get your result, go to two, press your test button, go to three, press your test button. This one's a lightning circuit, remember, so I'll change the switching positions, so the cables are getting tested in the switches. Quarter four, press your test button. Quarter five, press your test button. Quarter six, press your test button. Six is a lighting circuit, so swap your switching positions and do the test again. And we've tested all the live conductors to earth. Again, all results should be perfect because it's new cable. It is possible and allowed to test both your live conductors to earth at the same time. So your live conductors will be live and your neutral. It's a little bit more tricky now because we do have RCDs. In the past, you used to be able to clip onto the MCB's bus bar and onto the neutral. You're increasingly not able to do that now because of RCBOs and RCDs. And there's a potential that you could put the test voltage through these devices. So here's a few ways of doing it. There's one way you get like a link out lead with the clips on. You put one clip on the neutral bar, one clip on the metal part of the probe. 
and then you can put the probe into the MCB and do your test that way. So that's one method of doing it. Another method, and I must admit I've never tried this, but I've just recently been reading about these. It's a magnetic link. So at one end of the link, you've got like your crocodile clip, which you can put on a neutral bar. And the other end of the link, it's got a, like a magnetic connector, which you can put onto the screw on the MCB. So linking out the live and neutral, your green clip on the earth bar, and you'd use your red probe on the neutral bar and do your test that way. And that way you've linked out your neutral and live to earth. My preferred method is to actually take the conductor out of the MCB and link that with some link out leads onto the neutral bar and you can test with your probes. I personally prefer this method because you've got no chance of leaving a link in place for example. I know it's all isolated but I personally don't like to link out live and neutral if I can help it. I prefer to take the live out the MCB and then test with the probes as shown. So there's three ways of testing live conductors to earth. We link out the line in neutral because there might be equipment on the circuit that's vulnerable to the test voltage. Passing 500 volts through it could cause it some damage. That's more in your periodic inspection. When the installation has been in use, you might have loads you can't find. It's always worth doing a continuity test before you do your installation resistance test, because if you get a reading on your continuity test, you know that there's something in the circuit, and the installation test will just come back as a fail. You can also test at 250 volts, and that's less likely to damage anything sensitive because it's been designed for that kind of voltage range. And sometimes it's just completely impractical to disconnect everything that's on a circuit. That's why it's good to do your insulation resistance testing as you go. You know that everything's in good condition. And test before you connect everything up. Say like you've got dimmers on the circuit, then you could do a combined test right at the very end when you've put your plate on. So you can do a final test and you can also test with the load in place. You imagine disconnecting all the lighting and the property to do a test. It, it's just not practical, is it? So combining live and neutral to earth can be really useful. Insulation resistance testing can be really tricky to do because you can get so many misleading results. You can get false positives and false negatives. So you end up looking for a fault that's not really there. There's quite a few common things that will give you low insulation resistance readings. As we've mentioned a few times, any loads will give you low insulation resistance readings, lamps, neons, some things you can't switch off such as smoke alarms, USB sockets, certain things on new installs like damp plaster can cause issue. Until that dries out, that can bring your insulation resistance readings down. So if it's been recently plastered, let it dry out a little bit, see if it improves the readings. If you were putting in new appliances, you might want to test them before you put them in. So things like cookers can have damp elements, which can bring your readings down. Surge protection. In accessible locations as well, you often get built-in kitchens where you can't get to the plug for the fridge, for example. That's always going to pull your readings down because you can't disconnect. This is more periodic, but up in the loft you're going to have things like distribution amplifiers, which you forgot about. Incorrect identification of conductors. You might be testing between the live and switch live, for example. You might think you're testing the neutral. So a good knowledge of what you actually are testing, but you are testing between the various conductors. And also mixing cables from other circuits. Quite easy to get the neutrals mixed up if they haven't been put in the board correctly and labelled correctly. You might be testing cables from different circuits, getting perfect insulation resistance testing. Because you will have, because they're completely separate from each other. The pen conductor, which is a shared neutral and protective earth. That will cause you problems. So let's have a look at the issue of testing the wrong conductor. In this example, we've got a ring final circuit and another circuit here. I've just brought the neutral into the board here. If you get these neutrals mixed up, it's possible that you might miss this fault. So we have a screw through a cable, but it's only affecting two conductors. It's affecting a neutral and a CPC. Now, because the neutrals and CPCs are common together at the fuse board, and testing between the neutral bar and the MET, we will get a very low insulation resistance reading. That's not helping us find out which cables are affected. We'll keep the earth connected together. So we need to disconnect the neutral bar. This is where you can run into potential problems, especially if the neutrals aren't in the right order and the ring final conductors aren't in the same neutral terminal. It is possible to check on the healthy neutral of the ring final and the neutral from another circuit. You'll get good test results. 
This is why it's good to check for the continuity of the neutrals before you do your installation resistance testing. This can occur with any circuits. When you've got a lot of neutrals, you can end up testing the wrong neutral to live or CPC, making you think the circuit's in good condition when it's possibly not. And also further on down the line, when you're doing your fault finding, you might disconnect the sockets from the ring final circuit and then you won't have any continuity between the neutrals at all. And you can see how easy it is to get your neutrals mixed up. Here's an example here of the neutral bars not matching what's going on at the MCB. And you can see they don't correlate. So when you, so when you come across something like this, it just makes your job of fault finding a little bit harder, doesn't it? But we're heading into the realms of periodic inspection and testing now. That'll be in another video. This video is more to do with the initial verification. So I've got a ring final circuit, the two neutrals from the ring final circuit, and just a neutral from another circuit. You can see there's damage, there's a screw in it. So I'm getting insulation resistance of 0, 0.00 megaohms. Disconnect the neutrals, this would be like disconnecting the neutrals from the neutral bar. So I'll separate out all the neutrals. We'll do a test between each neutral and the earth bar. So that neutral is one that's got the poor insulation resistance. That neutral has got poor insulation resistance as well. That neutral is testing good. We know that only one neutral is actually in contact with the CPC. So what we need to do is disconnect the ring final, as it were. So we've got separate neutrals now. And now we should be able to work out which one is actually in contact with the CPC. So the middle neutral there, that's getting a low reading. And the other ring final conductor, that is giving us a good reading again. There we go, just to confirm. Poor insulation resistance on that neutral. Here's an example about testing across a neon. See, so I press the test button, you'll even see the neon light up. But look at the reading we're getting. This shows the importance of knowing how to use your meter correctly. Testing the leads, testing them apart, should get off the scale reading, put them together, I should get 0, 0.00 mega ohms. But I didn't, did I? That's because I got the leads in the wrong position in the meter. If you don't set your leads up correctly, you're never going to get correct installation resistance readings. You're going to get off the scale all the time. You're never going to find a fault. It might sound obvious, but it's important to know how your meter works. So here I'm testing multi-core cable, it's brown to black, brown to grey, black to grey. You see I'm pressing the clip on there so I get a nice tight connection. So make sure you go through all the combinations and if perhaps there's no insulation resistance problems between the conductors we can do a combined test to earth. There we go, 999 megadomes, that cable looks like it's in good condition. This time I'm doing a combined test to earth, and now we've got a problem, 0, 0.00 megaohms. And there's a reason, I'll put a screw through the cable. Take the screw out, and test again. And the issue seems to have gone, but the issue hasn't gone at all. I'm going to show you a couple of things here. You will get issues with that cable from now on. That section needs to be replaced. As you can see here, all I've done is lay that cable on a slightly damp sponge. Look what's happening to the insulation resistance readings. Goes down to 0 0.12. It might test okay when you're just holding it in free air. That cable's going to be buried somewhere, it's going to be clipped to something. So you're going to get issue with that cable now. It needs to be replaced. So that was an example of a definite fault causing insulation resistance problems. But you can get a misleading reading as well. There's actually nothing wrong with this cable. You can imagine the end on the sponge is in the back box, it's got wet plaster. 
when the cable's held up, test fine. I just lay it on the sponge and the insulation resistance goes right down. You might think, yes, but you've cut loads of insulation off. Let's get rid of that bare copper and we'll test it again and see what happens. So here we go, cut the copper off. So we've just got the insulated conductors. Press it onto the slightly damp sponge. And again, look at the insulation resistance readings. So this is not a fault as such. You might have wet plaster in a back box. Once that's dried out, cleaned out, your insulation resistance will rise back up again. You can get surprisingly high insulation resistance readings when you've got bare conductors very, very close to each other. But this is a false test really because this is in free air. Generally this is going to be in the fabric of a building and moisture will bridge that insulating air layer. So a cable's insulation resistance isn't a set thing. It can change over time, so it needs constant testing. Moisture, temperature, vibration, all these things can affect a cable's insulation resistance. That's why it's important to make sure the cable, when you put it in, is in good condition, because if there's any weakness in it, it will be found out. 